Hello and welcome back to the Boost Plant channel. My name is Logan with Team Boost Plant and today we're gonna to talk about some of our favorite beginner aquarium plants. All of the links to our favorite plants are gonna be down in the description. And before we get started, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel for more great content like this. So let's get started. There are many different types of aquarium plants in this hobby, and most of them are named by their physical characteristics as well as the way that they grow. So a few common types of aquarium plants you'll run into are stem plants, rosette plants, bulbs, epiphytic plants, also known as epiphytes, mosses, floating plants, and carboning plants. And for today's video, we're gonna be discussing some of our favorite beginner plants. So we won't cover all of those topics today, but stay tuned for future videos where we will. Today, we'll be talking about Bucephalandra, Anubius, Java Fern, Mosses, and Crips. So these plants are considered some of the easiest beginner-friendly aquarium plants in the hobby, but what makes an aquarium plant easy versus advanced? Well, easy category plants tend to be slow growers that are not dependent on a lot of light. So you can grow them out in very low light conditions, which means that a budget light is gonna get you great results with these types of plants. Additionally, because they're slow growers, they don't require a lot of maintenance. And most importantly, they don't absolutely require CO2 injection. Now it's important to know that all aquarium plants will benefit from the addition of injected CO2, but the plants we're gonna be discussing today will still do just fine without it. So first, let's talk about epiphytic plants, also known as epiphytes. And all an epiphyte is, is a plant that grows on the surface of another plant or a piece of rock or wood or really any other object, and it grows to that surface for support. So in this video, we're gonna be referring to plants like Anubias, Microsorums, and Bucephalandra as epiphytes, but they're technically considered rheophytes. And all a rheophyte is, is a plant that grows in fast-moving water, usually on the banks of a river, or a creek hanging out on a rock or a piece of wood. And if you want to get really nerdy, they're technically considered facultative rheophytes, which just means that sometimes they're exposed to fast moving water. Some seasons the water is moving fast, but other times the water is low and they're just kind of hanging out on a rock. And epiphytes, true epiphytes that is, are actually things like Spanish moss and air plants. Plants that just grow on like the surfaces of other plants or trees or rocks. They're not exposed to water. But for the remainder of this video, we'll just call them epiphytes and just know that most other hobbyists will probably refer to these plants as epiphytes. Very common epiphytic plants you'll see in this hobby are Anubias and Bucephalandra, as well as Microsorums, otherwise known as Java Fern. And these plants are super easy because they have what's called a rhizome that produces roots and shoots, and you can sort of wedge that rhizome in the cracks of rocks or in between little pieces of wood, and eventually roots will come down and the plant will naturally attach to whatever structure you've put it onto. Unlike other types of aquarium plants, you don't bury it completely in the substrate. It is okay to bury the roots, but you do not want to bury the rhizome. The rhizome needs oxygen and water circulation around it to survive. So it's very common to attach the rhizomes of Anubius or Bucephalandra to pieces of hardscape with super glue. And when you're gluing epiphytic plants to pieces of hardscape, you wanna look for a cyanoacrylate based super glue. And as long as it's cyanoacrylate based, it's gonna be completely aquarium safe, which means it's gonna be safe for your plants, your fish, and your shrimp. Additionally, if you don't wanna go the super glue route, you can attach these rhizomes to pieces of hardscape or other objects with cotton thread. Just wrap it around a bunch of times, tie it off, and eventually the cotton thread will dissolve, but by the time it does dissolve, the plant will be naturally attached. So here at Boost Plant, as our name implies, we are absolutely in love with Bucephalandra. There's so many different cool types and fun little fact, our logo, which you're gonna see on this pillow over here, as well as my shirt, is designed after the Skeleton King Boost. Anubius is a close second when it comes to our favorite, and it comes in a variety of leaf sizes, as well as tones and colors. Some of our favorites include Anubius Nana Petite, Anubius Barteri Coffifolia, and Anubius Golden Coin. 
While Java Fern looks very different from Anubius and Bucephalandra, it also has a rhizome, so you can work with it very similarly. But Java Fern sort of grows these larger leaves that kind of spread out eventually, and they can be trimmed to be kept tight or compact, or you could allow it to grow sort of large and have very big leaves in the aquarium. And just like the Anubius and Bucephalandra, you can wedge it into the gaps of hardscape, glue it, tie it with cotton thread. And some of our favorite Java Fern varieties include include Java Fern Sunrise, Java Fern Trident, and Java Fern Narrow. So that'll do it for the epiphytic plants. Now let's talk about aquarium moss. So moss is an extremely popular beginner aquarium plant, and it's also popular with very advanced competitive hobbyists too, because it comes in such a variety of shades of green and different textures and different sizes, and it's really easy to attach to the surface of hardscape. And you can even plant it in the substrate for a carpeting effect if you want. But just like epiphytic plants like Anubius, Bucephalandra, and Java Fern, it has very low lighting requirements. So it can grow in most conditions and it doesn't require the addition of CO2. When it comes to planting or attaching moss to objects, you have a variety of options. What we like to do is glue it to hardscape or tie it. But if this is your first time working with moss, we recommend that you sort of chop it up into teeny tiny pieces, put a little bit of that cyanoacrylate based gel glue onto your hardscape and then attach that clump and then just kind of repeat. Eventually the moss will sort of grow out and you can trim it to keep it really compact. Some of our favorite mosses include Fissidens fontanus, Java moss, and Christmas moss. So go ahead and check out boostplant.com or check out the links in the description and find a variety and color that fits your needs. And for the final category of today, we have Cryptocorians, also known as Crips. So crypts are what we call a rosette plant, meaning that the leaves originate from a single point called the rosette, and they sort of spread out in a star-like manner. So like a lot of aquarium plants, you can take off the leaves completely, and then new leaves will originate from that rosette and come back in a more compact, bushy manner. And while crypts are often labeled as easy beginner category plants, We'd argue that they might sort of be closer to the medium side when it comes to difficulty because crypts experience the infamous crypt melt. So what does that mean? That means that when you plant a new crypt, it's very, very common for the leaves on that crypt to sort of decay off or melt away. But why does this happen? Well, with a lot of aquarium plants, they like stability and they like constant conditions. So when you visit the pet store or you buy a crypt from boostplant.com and it's shipped to your home, it has to adapt to the conditions of your aquarium. And the way it does that is it sheds off its old leaves and it grows new ones that are perfectly suited for the water chemistry, the temperature, the lighting, the CO2 of your specific little ecosystem. Don't fear if your crypts melt back, they will totally come back. You just need to be patient and proactive about removing any melted tissue. One way to help reduce crypt melt is to actually trim off the immersed leaves of the plant. This just means the leaves that were grown on land and then leave the submerged leaves. This will help the plant adapt a little bit quicker and then the immersed leaves won't have to melt off. While this isn't entirely necessary, we recommend it once in a while because it could help reduce crypt melt. And unlike the other categories of plants that we've discussed in today's video, rosette plants can be planted in the soil, just like stem plants or carpeting plants. So you grab the rosette with your aquascaping pincettes, plant it firmly in the soil, and then eventually new leaves will originate from that rosette and you'll have a beautiful crypt. So we discussed one possible way to prevent crypt melt in general, but here are some ways to prevent melting of any plant in your aquarium. So first off, we recommend planting in a tank with filter media that is fully cycled and possibly even soil that is a few weeks old and also cycled. And in order to learn more about cycling a tank, you can check out our video about how to cycle a brand new aquarium. That'll be linked down below in the description. 
Additionally, it's really important to keep the conditions of your aquarium stable. Plants love stability, and so do your fish. So when you're planting a tank, it's important that you have very consistent lighting. It's important that the water hardness is not constantly fluctuating. It's important that the pH is not constantly fluctuating. And it's important that if you are injecting CO2, you're consistent about when and how much you inject CO2. Finally, in keeping with the theme of consistency, it's important that you do regular, consistent maintenance. So if you're doing your water changes on Sunday and you do a 30% water change every Sunday, make sure you do that every Sunday and one week it's not Wednesday and another week it's Tuesday. Consistency is extremely important because your plants have to adapt to the conditions of your aquarium and the more consistent you keep things, the more they'll be able to divert energy to new beautiful growth, which is gonna make your aquarium look that much better. So that's all the time we have for today's video, but do us a favor and let us know down below in the comments what your absolute favorite go-to beginner-friendly plant is. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Logan with Team Boost Plant. Now get out there and create something beautiful.